So we carry on with our course introduction to railway systems and we are starting chapter three. Chapter three, railway uh, traction systems or uh, yes, railway traction systems. It's those systems that is responsible for the movement and the braking of trains. Also the, the, the systems that are responsible for getting power from the infrastructure. So without further ado, let's have a look at our chapter content. And this is the beginning of the chapter, railway traction systems. So in this chapter, we'll be having a quick introduction to the lecturer as we do on, on the beginning of every uh, chapter. Then we need to uh, uh, go to some of the physics law and try to understand some of the basic physics. Then we have a, uh, have a look at uh, some of the electrical engineering concepts that is associated with traction. Then we'll discuss DC power supply, direct current power supply. And uh, move, moving to diesel traction systems, AC and DC machines for traction and machines are motors. And uh, this is, there are difference between AC machines and DC machines. And for people who are not familiar with the concept of machines, this is a concept that you, you, you will be taught in the university while you are studying uh, electrical engineering. Section six will be talking about traction systems control, a little bit about power, power electronics, autonomous traction systems and exotic traction, some of the systems that are not, uh, not diesel, not AC or DC. Also we'll be talking about braking system, AC power supply, which is one of the main feeds for the railway, which where you see this overhead lines with 25 kV AC. And finally, we'll talk about electromagnetic compatibility, how we make sure that our uh, uh, energy uh, prov uh, provision to the railway does not create that electromagnetic interference that might affect our equipments. So introduction to the lecturer quickly, that's Firas Nasser, the legend BSc in uh, civil engineering, MSc in railway systems, and doing a few innovations in the field of railway inspections and uh, uh, some of some other aspects. Well, unusual career path, and we are hoping that with this course, we'll be able to give a, a good introduction to people who are interested to enter the world of railways. So that's Firas Nasser and let's have a look at the basic physics of a railway traction. So in this section, we'll be discussing the traction subsystem, some basic equations, uh, concepts in traction. Then we'll be providing a calculation example. We'll just talk about the inputs. We'll do the calculation in another video. And then we'll, do, uh, we'll talk about the use of simulation and how we can get the results through the use of simulation and some uh, computation software such as MATLAB and others. So the traction subsystem, if we look at the traction subsystem, you have train service specification that is a, that its job to propel and retard trains. So this is the main function of a traction subsystem to propel and retard train and retard me, make sure that you can break with those train, you can control the movement. But how, uh, in order to make sure this happen, you need to get the uh, train uh, service uh, uh, information, the acceleration and braking limits, signaling system, environmental regulations, and others. So this is inputs entering this system, but also you add some natural resources, staff and management capabilities, supplier capabilities, and availability of funding. So all of these go into this system to make sure that it delivers its function, to propel and retard train, and the outcome will be train service performance. And we can measure that performance by having different speeds of trains, different acceleration and different braking. All of this is the output of the traction system. So let's have a look at the basic equations of motion. This is like eighth grade basic equation. So Newton's second law, F equal MFA. This is one of the basic, basic equation, force equal mass multiplied by acceleration. And to uh, the laws of motion, uh, there are several laws of motion, but V equal uh, the acceleration multiplied by time. The distance is velocity multiplied by time. And you have linear movement and you have rotational movement. And to know the rotational movement, you need to know not the linear acceleration, but the angular acceleration. And in order to calculate the acceleration, you need to calculate the force. So 
acceleration equal force multiplied by mass, but there are several forces that affect the train. The first one is the attractive effort. This is what you uh, introduce to uh, to drag the other wagons. Then, and this is is being resisted by a frictional drag uh, from uh, the, from air, from also from rolling resistance from the wheel rail interface. Then gradient force because of the slope. Uh, if you have any slope, so there is a gravity force that is coming because of the slope. And there is a curved dra drag. If you are going through curves, there is a curved drag because of the curvature of the curve. So this will help you to calculate the acceleration by dividing the uh, resultant, uh, the net force by, by dividing that with uh, on effective mass. Now you have the acceleration, you can calculate the speed V equal the acceleration multiplied by the time. So to, to calculate the attractive effort, you need to calculate the adhesion coefficient. And the adhesion coefficient, we talked about this before, uh, can vary between 0.001 to 0.45. And the mass is the mass of the train or mass of the power wheel, and G is the gravity. So just to get some numbers on the adhesion, uh, adhesion numbers, mu, what are the values? Coefficient of friction usually between 10 to 30 percent. Values of coefficient adhesion for metros is 0.2, for locomotives is 0.3, for braking 0.15 to 0.2. Safety calculation you can calculate that as 0.08. So train resistance. Now let us look at tractive effort in details. This is a track, and you can have the same calculation on a train that have a drive force, and this is the tractive effort. And that force is being resisted by air resistance, by rolling resistance. And to calculate the net resistance force, it will be a constant A plus B, V. B is the bearing friction, is the friction with the ground, multiplied by velocity, plus C is the aerodynamics drag coefficient multiplied by V square. So it's uh, by that, you will be able to calculate the resistance force the, uh, and you would divide that from the drive force. But it's not only the drive force, you need to calculate also the gradient effect or the gradient force. This is the, the weight of the, of the vehicle and it has uh, uh, two uh, uh, components, uh, uh, X, F force on the X axis and force on the Y axis. And you need to calculate the force that is, uh, is parallel to the slope direction. And so it's mg multiplied by x, and this x should be one of the uh, one of the uh, triangle sides. Then you have the curve drag, and curve drag equal k multiplied by r, and k is experimentally determined constant divided by r. R is the radius of the curve. So it's like a table. You get the experimental uh, constant and you divide that by the radius. And based on that, you, you can have the, all the components. You know how to calculate the attractive effort, the frictional drag or the resistance force, the gradient force, and the gear of drag. So the remaining is the effective mass, and the effective mass equals the tear mass, which is the, the mass uh, of the empty wagon. Sometimes added, uh, you add a rotary allowance to that, and multiply to the rotor allowance plus the payload. What is what is uh, being uh, shipped or what is being loaded on that vehicle? So that's the effective mass. With that, you can calculate the acceleration. Let us look at the very uh, simple example uh, of calculation. So this is uh, given the underneath input: 25 ton axle load, 50 wagons at 100 tons. So this is 100 to 100 tons. The uh, so. Every wagon has a 100 ton weight. So this is why it has 25 ton axles. So there are four axles. The initial acceleration is 0.6 and the adhesion for this local mu, the mu is, is 0.3. What are the factors to calculate the net force? The factors to calculate the net force, which is, uh, uh, is, is the gradient uh, force and we'll assume it's zero. Will curve drag, we'll assume it's zero. We will have a, a, a resistance force. Also, we don't have the, uh, uh, we don't have the, uh, 
the components for that because we don't have the constants. So we can calculate this through F equal multiply M multiplied by A. So we have the mass, it's 50 wagons, 50 multiplied by 100 tons, that's 50, 5,000 tons. Every ton is around 1,000 kilograms, that's 5, 5 million kilograms. So that's 5 million kilograms divided, uh, multiplied, F equal MVA, multiplied by 0 0.6, this equal 3 million Newton. So 3 million Newton equal 3,000 kilonewton. So 3,000 kilonewton is the net force. How many locus do you need to achieve this force? So you need to calculate this based on the uh, uh, coefficient of adhesion, uh, the weight of the loco, and uh, maybe you have a standard loco, and you, you and the gravity. So uh, it's equal F mu m phi g. So this is how you can calculate that. Uh, mu 0.3 m let us say 100 ton, and that's the lo locomotive. And let us assume G is 10, just for the ease of calculation. So M is uh, 100 ton, that's 100,000. 100,000 multiplied by, uh, by, by 10 is, uh, uh, yes, 100,000 multiplied by 10, that's 1 million, 1 million by, uh, 1 million, you multiply that by mu, 0.3, this is 300,000, uh, 300,000 300, Newton, and uh, what we calculated here is uh, 3 million Newton, so you would need 10 locus. That's just based on a quick calculation, we, well, I need to do this in details in another video. And there is another question at 20 meter per second, acceleration 0.4 meter per second square. What is the power rating for each locomotive? So now you can calculate uh, uh, the power of each locomotive. So we'll do this in another video, but this is, you now you got the concepts, how you can do the calculations uh, and how you can calculate the resultant force. Now, the use of simulation, sometimes you would be needing to know how uh, the force is being applied across the whole network or, uh, uh, or based on different conditions. So there is some consideration you need to think about the traction distribution. Is it concentrated power? Is it a locomotive or is it distributed power? Is it multiple units? Uh, is it autonomous traction? Is it diesel, diesel electric or exotic forms or is it electric uh, kind of traction? The infrastructure is supplied by elect electrical supply. So traction with infrastructure, is it, uh, is it all, you need to think about your infrastructure, the gradients and other aspects. Also, you need to think about different transmission types just for any coefficients or for any aspects that might affect that. So there is mechanical, hydraulic, electric. Most of the time you'd have electric motors and use of the simulation. So why you use the simulation, you can provide a wide range of inputs and you can calculate the in-service performance, the performance on different parts of the network and the on-time performance. And the, tech, uh, the second thing you can do a complete network modeling. You can model the whole network. So this is just a quick introduction of railway traction and the railway traction systems. We'll be looking at the example in more detail and we'll be uh, moving, talking about some of the electrical engineering concepts that affect uh, traction systems. That was a quick introduction that, uh, and that was the first section. We'll see you in the next section. Have a great evening.